everybody this is Texas Tiger Diggs with a fast uh, video um, I've always said I've been a fan of Tesoros and you guys haven't seen me use many Tesoros lately there have been so many new great machines out that you know I, I had put my old uh, the old soldier on the back burner I knew the old soldier was there and could still fight I just hadn't pulled it out I just was playing with the new toys but uh, this is the Outlaw, and you guys know I've had this for a while if you followed my videos. If you just put Tesoro Outlaw, you'll probably get a list of five or six videos or more, uh, specifically on the Outlaw. And it's one of my uh, favorite machines, and pro probably my favorite in the UMAX lineup. And there's a reason for it. Uh, one thing is the granularity of the uh, discrimination. Uh, this It's the only Tesoro machine that that's out that I know of where I can darn their guarantee quarters if I turn this if I turn my discrimination all the way up on this machine max it out it will not find dimes it will not find copper pennies it almost exclusively finds quarters of course other high conductive targets that might be at or above that range as well you know so big silver would fall in there uh, and according and uh, and of course uh, silver quarters etc should fall in there as well because those should read slightly higher than the clad quarters uh, so uh, you know that's one of the reasons I like it and it's just got the usual limitations of uh, the Soro line it is uh, completely analog there's no display there's no target ID uh, of course that issue is only not it's not an issue in only two of the Soro line and that is the Cortez and the De Leon which is basically a a somewhat crippled Cortez like the Safari I use is a somewhat crippled E-Track so uh, you know it's a uh, it's really good and the thing is and the reason I really like that is I'm going to be going out potentially tomorrow if the weather's good and uh, right now I have a little a little liner of uh, monster tape here so this is not the way it's configured I sprayed a little plastic feel in there because I'm not going to use uh, the coil cover for this. I know, uh, well, for one thing, this this was slightly I was slightly warped uh, when I bought it. Unfortunately, I didn't I didn't send it back because it wasn't that important to me that it was perfect. But it doesn't make the coil coil cover fit that well. And even at that, this is a major increase in weight, and this is at best a very 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 uh, what was the imbalanced type of coil this Bigfoot type is called a clean sweep for Tesoro but you know I think the whites was called a Bigfoot I'm not sure how many other manufacturers uh, uh, you know took a chance over into this range because it has not been extraordinarily successful I think that the clean sweep is still on sale for Tesoro and I think the only way you can get the whites is in the aftermarket or used market so you know, I'm going to be taking this out to the new park I've got because the new park I've got has got several areas. Now, I, the reason I think that this is such a maligned is, of course, the depth. And, uh, you know, the large coils now will, uh, will give you depth uh, and uh, will give you almost in, in some, sometime in excess of this in, in width or length or combination thereof. So it's sort of been put on the back burner. But for a coil of this size, uh, if you get a large uh, double D or concentric coil of this size, it's going to be heavier than this, I believe, or at least uh, at least more or differently imbalanced than this. So uh, I'm going to be going to use this because uh, I've heard people used to call this a uh, <laughs> a ring machine, in effect. And I can see where they would be right now because there's a couple of things. We know that this thing is really limited by the density of targets and trash. So you're going to be looking in lower trash areas with this. So this will definitely not be the only detector I'll be taking. I'll be taking either the Safari or the Macro Racer or the Forest Core or uh, probably. Uh, in fact, I don't think any reason I shouldn't, I'll be carrying the uh, XP Deus because it's going to be a very light alternative to this very, very imbalanced and clumsy to use uh, machine. But uh, the reason I think this is, would be a good ring machine is not because of its special adherence to rings because you're going to cover a lot of area, uh, you know, 
because you're going to use a windshield type wiper motion, but also because it automatically demands a certain density of targets. And it's my theory that rings are found better in low density trash areas because I don't know about you, it's difficult to, to, to differentiate some size rings from, uh, from uh, pull tabs. And if you're in a very high trash area, that could mean a thousand pull tabs to one ring. And I don't think that's a cost effective solution. So chances are you're going to find rings in a less trash dense area. And chances are you're going to be using this in a less trash dense area if you're using it correctly. So I'm going to be taking this out and uh, I think this is an underestimated thing and the reason it's underestimated is you can get a coil almost this big in a double D format which would be a excruciatingly big coil. You're probably going to need a swing aid to use it. But and you're going to get great depth. You're not going to get great depth with this and I believe that that lack of depth is both its, both its weakness and its strength. Uh, the reason I use the uh, the outlaw with this and not the uh, the modded compadre uh, and I didn't use it with the Cortez or uh, with any of the other UMAX machines I've had is those UMAX machines were getting about two two inches two and a half inches of depth I'm able for some reason to equivalent to super tuning the uh, the other end of the spectrum for uh, Tesoro the uh, the Tejan, the Vaquero, the Cibola, it, it, you can turn it all the way up and you can get maybe five, four and a half, five inches of depth. That's great with this coil. And it, but uh, I'm, I'm putting a coating on the bottom, a coating that's going to give me a headache and brain damage pretty soon. I'm going to get, get it out of here because I did spray it stupidly before I started this video. So, uh, what is, what it, uh, so, the reason I put that coating on there, and it's a permanent coating, and but this it it's I, I sprayed it in a light coat, just to protect the uh, the integrity of the coil, not its beauty necessarily. Uh, and the reason that uh, that you need to do that with this one especially is you're going to have to sweep it along the ground. This is a very easy detector to use, but you're going to have to have a if not a manicured at least a mowed lawn. So you can actually sweep it along the ground because you can't give yourself an inch from the ground when your depth is probably at best, at very best, going to be about five inches. So uh, I'm going to be taking this out and I'm going to try it in the park and a, uh, I'm going to get away from the, uh, the soccer field because the soccer field will tend to be more dense with targets. I might try it some, but I'm going to go into one of the more flat field like areas in the back of the park. And sort of start there and then work my way up toward the front because this is a relatively new park for me and uh, so um, you know, I'm still I'm still a little bit leery and it's in a new in a jurisdiction I haven't hit that often but a jurisdiction where I do have evidence in the uh, the municipal record that detecting is allowed and with the depth of this I know I'm not gonna have to go deep for my targets so I can take a smaller trial and just pop out the things that are very small and at best do very, very dip-like, uh, uh, you know, dip-like uh, type configuration for uh, plugs, a little dip of a plug to get it out. Uh, and uh, like I said, and our parks are not manicured, so, they're, so it's, it, will, it will be easy to camouflage. So I just wanted to tell you about this and the reason I'm uh, taking the, uh, I'm taking the, uh, outlaw back into the field. I've always loved this uh, detector and if you reach a point where you have worked for a while and dug up three or four hundred pull tabs it's nothing like cooking that discrimination all the way up and moving quickly and just picking up five or six quarters boom 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 if you haven't beaten the park to death that is. So uh, I am going to uh, get this back out and get it going so I thought I would do this. It's been a long time since I did a, a pre-discussion of uh, of a detector and a strategy so I'm going to be carrying this outside on my uh, patio in my apartment and to, so it can, it can dry overnight. Uh, first I'm going to check the weather. Then I think on second thought I'll take it down to my garage. It's nice and airy. It's on a different floor so I won't be getting this headache that I will get if I keep it up here on this floor. That plastic, that uh, you know, this this is some of the stuff I use. I use this Flex Seal stuff uh, 
and it will it will uh, fog your mind if you breathe too much of it. In any case, I will talk to you later, and I will probably see you in the field tomorrow if the weather allows. It doesn't really matter if it's the next day and the weather allows it. Uh, I will be using that as well, and also I might be getting a digger or two new digger or two out in the field. We'll see how that works. In any case, this is Texas Tiger Digs, and I will see you uh, next time.